Hello, Daryl Rhodes here with Wet Pond, your pond specialist, and we're going to continue going over the compressors and uh, diffusers, aeration, and some of the differences. Right now, zoom in on that. That's one of our boils. This is in our big pond, and we're going to slowly walk around so we don't get you dizzy and take a look at the other two boils. I don't have the valves uh, adjusted exactly the same, but uh, this one's pushing pretty good. That first one we're looking at is about eight and a half, eight feet deep, somewhere around there. That there's probably around five foot, five and a half, maybe six. And we're about seven feet over here. So we can see that uh, we're pushing out a lot of water. Uh, a lot of water movement, got the ripples rolling out there, and the water just kind of boiling there. So I'm not going to adjust the valves, but we're just going to go into a uh, that 4, CF, 4 CFM compressor next. And I think what we're pushing now is 3 CFM, somewhere around there, 3.2, on a third horse piston type compressor. We have, uh, we have it sitting in the Air Max cabinet. This is another a test compressor of ours that we're playing with and along with the diffusers that are in the pond let's go back to those those three diffuser boils we just saw they are uh, our new diffusers with turtle guards on them so we have our stainless steel plate silicone rubber silicone membrane and a diff uh, turtle guard on it because I'm tired of changing out diffusers because of the snapping turtles chewing on them which destroys them one bite they're done so let's get to work I'm gonna go switch out compressors maybe we'll pop in and show you the, this compressor that we're running and we're back with the uh, linear diaphragm and you see it's starting to push push again uh, uh oh we haven't made it down to the deep end yet. Nothing happening there. Uh, I guess what we're going to have to do is throttle back the the two back in the shallow end. But this is the same compressor we used up at the little pond, showing you the difference between the 1.8 CFM and, uh, watch your fingers. See, so you're getting some rise out of the water. Nice boil. Same thing over here. It's a little bigger than the one on our left but what I wanted to talk about is our linear diaphragm compressor compared to the piston type compressor they're not rated the linear diaphragm the small green one black ones or blue ones that you see and there's other brands out there they're not rated for pressure I mean, you only put out, at most, depending on which one you have, they could put out up to four and a half PSI. So that is the reason why we're not getting, oh, there's a couple of bubbles coming up. We're not getting the airflow down to the depths of the pond. Now we can make this work, but it's gonna add a lot of back pressure to the linear compressor and potentially wear it out quicker. Uh, I think we're eight and a half, maybe nine foot in that spot. But, trying to explain the piston type compressor, compressor makes PSI. Linear diaphragm makes more CFM, but less PSI. So with the piston type compressor we can push that air down to say 30 feet deep and each you know the deeper you're going the swimming pool 
you know how your ears start popping and cracking well same thing in a pond uh, the deeper you go the more pressure is going on to your body onto your head and that's what we're trying to overcome with that air going to the bottom of the pond so the piston type compressor is best for deeper ponds and that's what we have here the linear diaphragm compressor the little quiet guy is rated for more shallow ponds up to eight feet deep uh, that puts some work on it uh, we had this exact same presser, compressor in the little pond it finally quit pumping the air it should be pumping uh, we put it in in 2009 2006 I think it was 2009 until 2015 so it had a good run good lifespan and that pond was only about seven feet and it run 24 7 for all those years we never shut it off turning the valves down for the back two now they're taking all the air so we're going to try and shut down these valves a little bit but listen to the compressor so a little bit of movement closing the valve we're adding more pressure you, you heard the uh, compressor change That's almost off. I'm going to turn off this other one a little bit. You know, if we're getting down, <clears throat> excuse me, if we're getting down to uh, just barely moving these valves. Hold on, we're going to turn this down just a skosh more. That's a big skosh. Uh, okay, so we have a boil in the back. We have the boil in the other back. The other back, left and right. Here's our left. Let's do the walk. We still have a uh, decent boil. one the right one these are just hard to uh, adjust these big valves and we got a decent boil here because we had to turn down to, you know turn them down more so we could force more air out to the front diffuser that's in deeper depth of water See, it's not nearly as big and strong as a piston type compressor. We don't have the boils we did because that compressor is working overtime, working hard to try and push and build pressure and get to the bottom of the pond to get those bubbles down there, get the air down there, create those bubbles to come up to the surface. So. That's why there's the difference between the linear diaphragm and the piston type compressor. Piston compressors reach the depth, no problem, doesn't have to work hard at all, and is able to get all that air that it can push down and out to the diffusers. The linear diaphragm, you know, it's, it's a lot more work for it to do it. Um, we're wasting, not for wasting, but we're using a lot of the CFM buildup is being used up by trying to create the PSI to get down and get that air pushed out. Uh, wish I could explain this easier, but hopefully, these, hopefully the pictures show it best. And we'll be back after we change things out. Okay, once again, Daryl Rhodes with What Pond Your Pond Specialist. Uh, just going over the difference between a linear linear diaphragm compressor 
and a piston type compressor. The linear diaphragm pushes more cubic feet per minute, but it can't get down to the depths of the pond. Um, eight foot is, is pushing it for them. And as we can see, this is a linear compressor running now. We had to adjust the valves to get the, this is the deep end. We had to adjust the valves to actually get this to even work, that diffuser. Um, nope, that's stuffing away. Gotta get all this stuff cut down. And we turn the back two diffusers down, close the valves down to force more air towards the front of the pond where it was deeper. So we're going to switch back again to the piston type compressor where we have the PSI, the pressure, the power to push that air down to the bottom, the depths of the pond, up to 30 feet deep or 50, depends on how deep you need to go. So let's switch it over and we'll be right back. Okay, we switched over to the piston type compressor. So we have the PSI, pounds per square inch, horsepower, to push that air to the depths of the pond. And again, the depth being the more pressure, the, more, the deeper the water, the more pressure there is pushing that air back towards the compressor. So as you can see, we didn't adjust the valves and we got quite a huge boil going on out there. Both these compressors, the linear and this uh, piston type, uh, the linear compressor was around four CFM and I believe the third horse compressor is around three something, but they're very similar and cubic feet per minute that they put out and since that front boil is so big we're gonna come back here adjust the valves and uh, get these blowing again pretty good so hold on let's go run back up here tweak them a little bit We tweaked them a little bit and I watched the uh, front one calm down a little bit. Yeah, let's run to the back. Oop, maybe a little too much back here now. Alright, I'm going to throttle these back just a little bit. What we want to do are plan while we're messing with the diffuser or the valves is to try and equal out these boils so they're all about the same size and I want the front one going a little bit more so we're going to turn one of these valves down a little bit and they don't move real easy so Alright, I calmed that one down. I think I'm liking it. I'm going to try and get the same approximate size of boil. The amount of water coming to boil and racing up to the surface. So, really need to get a new camera. I hope I explain this well about the difference between a linear diaphragm and a piston type compressor. They do make noise, uh, but once they're they do make noise. are covered up I mean it's a lot a lot quieter and it's a vibrate if I let go hey dude what's going on so 
couple other things linear diaphragm compressor can uh, live outside just like that it's not going to hurt it um, it's sealed so nothing's going to get into it uh, we don't want it thrown out in the middle of the pond because it is electric whereas the uh, piston type compressors they need covered five horse compressor out in the barn or out in the garage going at it it's only a third horse uh, it's quieted down because we have the better filter on it and I hope that's uh, you know this is just what you see here we're just testing out it's a different compressor we're just using the Airmax cabinet at this time uh, thinking of building our own cabinets uh, we'll get to that maybe next year, but for now, this is what we're using. Uh, they have an air intake. They have a fan on this side blowing out, mostly. And on the other side, they have a screen, so they're kind of cleaning the air, getting the big chunks out as it goes through the cabinet, then out the other side. Reason for that, these compressors generate a lot of heat. Heat will kill a compressor, so that's why the fan's there to try and keep the compressor cool when you're inside a cabinet. That's all we got for now. Uh, Daryl Rhodes with What Pond Your Pond Specialist. And I guess as you can see, it is fallout. And we got to get get to work, get some of these stuff cut down, or we'll have to get it burned up early in the spring. And we'll be soon shutting down our compressor here and going to a small linear diaphragm compressor over by the dock so that we can keep it ice free. Keep a hole in the ice, keep the toxic gases from building up under the ice and creating a fish kill. So, signing off for now. That's Daryl with What Pond, your pond specialist.